What if I told you there was a way to exchange those boring green presidential napkins for sexy computer cash? Jordan Belfort calls Bitcoin a fraud. It's a giant pyramid scheme. Nothing with crypto in the title ever turns out good. But can a made-up currency be accepted as legal tender in El Salvador while being banned in China? Be held by the leading electric car manufacturer to the amount of $2 billion? Be powerful enough to have the name of a major U.S. stadium change from the Staples Center to the Crypto.com Arena? Yes, because crypto, like currency, is made up. Wait. Didn't we just try to prove that it's real? No, we're trying to prove that it's currency. If you're confused by this idea, don't worry, most people are. According to a Pew Research poll conducted late in 2021, 86% of US adults say they've heard of cryptocurrency, while only 14% of US adults have been involved in cryptocurrency, meaning investing, trading, or spending it. Awareness of crypto is not understanding crypto. We're here to bridge that gap. Today, we Pareto is cryptocurrency, currency. Reach in your pocket and pull out a dollar bill. Sorry, I know you probably don't carry cash. Open your Venmo or banking app and see the representation of a dollar bill. Good? Good. This dollar is currency. And currency is anything that has a store of value that can be exchanged to transfer value between parties. Now, back in the day, in order to buy something, you had to barter for it. Bartering is like trading, and it requires both parties to want or need what the other party had. I got a cow, but I need three goats. In order to get my three goats, I need to not only find someone with three goats, but someone with three goats who also needs a cow. As you can imagine, it was super inefficient. Until they invented Goat App and solved all these problems. Nah, actually, they just started minting coins. Coins had an accepted store of value. That value was reinforced by governments and other businesses and decided legally that they had value. It didn't hurt that the coins themselves were usually minted out of precious metals like gold or silver. Now, I don't need to carry my cow all over town searching for a goat seller in need of a cow. I just find a cow seller who gives me five gold coins for my cow and take those coins to a goat seller who sells me three goats for that amount. One cow equals five coins equals three goats. If that seems like a fetch quest, I could blow your mind and say that all exchanges of money are elaborate fetch quests, proving that we're stuck in a game like simulation. But that's for another video. Most people realized, however, that carrying around gold coins is really damn heavy. There had to be a better way. Wait, what if we just had an app? They haven't even invented the phone yet. Okay, pieces of paper that represented gold and could be traded for gold at any time if the money holder wished. That's exactly what England did in 1816 when they established the gold standard. Each paper bill printed by the central bank in England represented a certain amount of gold, and those bills could be traded in for gold at any time. What this meant is that only a limited number of paper bills could be printed. Each bill represented a certain amount of money, and England's central bank couldn't print more money than it had gold in its vaults. So we moved from gold currency, something valuable, to paper a relatively worthless material, but with a direct link to a certain amount of gold. Thus begin the disconnect between money and its source of value. I heard value texted money and didn't hear back for three days. Three days later. Rude. Real quick, we're now offering a free seven-day trial of Pareto Labs. That's all our courses, including business skills, practical MBA foundations, and breakthrough mentor moments with industry innovators. Give it a look. Now back to the video. Turns out having some distance worked. So in 1900, the United States adopted the Gold Standard Act for its currency. But enough of that, here comes the Great Depression! When the Great Depression hit the US in the 1930s, there were major runs on banks and people began to hoard gold like starved Tolkien dragons. 
And because gold and currency were linked, taking gold out of circulation therefore limited the money supply in the US. And the availability of money in the economy is like oxygen to a fire. More oxygen can make a fire rage, and choking off oxygen can extinguish a fire completely. FDR, the current president and lover of three-letter acronyms, saw this conundrum, and so in 1933, he took the US off the gold standard, breaking the link between a dollar and a certain amount of gold. After that, the US Federal Reserve, aka the Fed, could print as much money as it needed in order to oxygenate the economy and spur growth. Think back to the beginning of this video when you checked your digital bank account, which is a representation of paper money, which is a representation of value decided by a separate organization that others recognize as having value. We're already willing to accept that currency is a concept. The term legal tender used in contracts and legal documents lets you use whatever is recognized by the contract holder in exchange for goods and services. There is no link to something physical. Currency can be a dollar, a coin, a cow, a virtual asset, or even a string of computer code, aka crypto currency. Stay in the know with Pareto Labs. Subscribe for weekly videos on the MBA topics you need to level up your career. Curious about a business topic and want to know more? Tell us in the comments. It might be our next video. Thanks for watching.